Welcome to PE Theory class, and today we will be starting our discussion with Unit 1 entitled Planning in Sports. We will try to define the meaning of planning. We'll try also to identify what are the objectives of, of conducting sports event, and we will try to recognize and understand what are the key and important terms in planning. What is planning? Planning is the foremost function in sports. It gives us a view of the future course of action. So when we do planning, we are putting something end in our mind. We're trying to look for what would be the outcome, what would be our desired outcome. Planning is creating a comprehensive action plan. And when we say comprehensive, it is rigid robust, okay? very detailed okay? to achieve the goal. When we do write our plan in, in sports event, we're not, just, we're not just putting a single aspect like what, what are the list of the activities that we will be having. We are also trying to put what are the behind requirements, what are the ongoing requirements, and what are the post requirements that we need to have. Okay. Later on in this presentation, we will try to define what are those aspects of planning that we should have. According to Kutz and O'Donnell, planning is an intellectual process, conscious determination of course of action, and basing of decision on purpose, facts, and considered estimates. It is an intellectual process. Whenever we do plan, we should put our at least 90% of our energy into planning. Because if you are planning properly, it will prevent poor performance. So it was like proper planning prevent poor performance, like five Ps. According to McFarland, has, he defined planning as the concept of executive action that embodies the skill of anticipating, influencing, and controlling. This is where the, where, where the thinking becomes doing. According to Farlan, Mac Farlan, when we try to do what we are thinking, it embodies the skill of anticipation. We're trying to anticipate what's going to be happening if we do this. It's, it's like a trial and error. And that, apart from that, we are also trying to influence. Like if we do, if we do this kind of planning, a very successful event, how does this impact people, all right? From athletes, how does this impact uh, spectators, those sports enthusiasts? That's called influencing. And at the same time, controlling. Controlling what? The nature and the direction of change. Because when we do plan, we have to make it flexible. We, we don't know in between what's, my, what's likely to happen. So when, when we have the sense of control in planning and when we make it flexible, we're trying to, you know, adapt to a certain changes. And this is what planning is according to Mark Forlan. Planning is defined as the process of deciding in advance. What do I mean by deciding in advance? What are the things to be done? Who is to do this? Who is to do that? And how to do this? How to do that? And when is to do this? Okay. So deciding in advance, again, skill of anticipating. And lastly, it is the aspect of managing which establishes aim, targets, and goal. You know, when we are conducting this any sports event, there is this certain target that we need to achieve. We need to have a certain goal. Maybe you were wondering, it, 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 must, it is sounding the same, aims, target, goal, and objective. When we say goal, this is the biggest umbrella, biggest umbrella. Aim is for the biggest instructor. Like, for example, uh, if you have Olympics, okay, Olympic is an international well-known event, okay? So what will be the aim, okay? So what is the, what is the biggest aim of this? Now, if you're just going to track it down into smaller units, so it's maybe from international event into, say, say, home country event or a national event, definitely the aim is going to be smaller, okay? And that becomes the target, Okay? You know, from gen general to specific, so from, from aim, target, goals, and objective, objective is the most specific 
a specific target that we must have. Like for example, in our school, we do conduct inter-houses competitions. So whenever we do this competition and it is only for a small, a short period of time, we, I always see to it that I only have to put certain objectives that are doable, relatable, and easy to achieve. I'm not going to put, for example, we conducted an inter-house competition and one of the objectives would be, for example, for, for all the students to be able to tone their muscles. You, you, will never, you, can, you are not able to tone your muscle in, 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 in two months' time, especially if you're having only PE once a week. Right? So that is a very unattainable goal, unattainable aims for me. It's super big. Okay? So we have to go and trim it down into smaller specifics, and that is what you call goals and objectives. And yes, in planning, you have to identify. You have your, what is your zone tells you about setting your target? What is the, the entire school if you are working in a school? What is the school ethos? What is the school value system? May, might as well you have to connect to that and put it as a target. What is the department target? If you are working in a PE department, you know, of course, a bigger, a bigger picture would be what is the, the countrywide sports council says about the aims and target. Okay, so from broad to specific. Uh, these are the important terms. Organizing is defined as distributing resources and organizing personnel. Okay, when we say organizing, keyword would be distributing resources, delegating. And when we say resources, it talks about not only about the implements, not only about the equipment, but also it talks about the personnel, okay? Staffing, okay? Who is to do this? Who is, who is to buy this? Who is, who is the one who is looking after this? Okay? What are the equipment required if we are doing this sports events? Say, for example, in terms competition in football, so what are the resources that we do have? So this is what organizing means. Staffing is identifying key staff position, ensuring proper talent. When we say staffing, like you if you do remember last year, we had this inter-school competition, okay? And the manner that I did staffing was, I said to it, what is the talent of this person possesses for me to be able to put him in this, in this position or in this job? Like, for example, marketing. I'm not going to put somebody who is not good in PR or public relation. I'm not going to put somebody who, who doesn't understand the, the market, who doesn't understand digital platforms and social medias, right? So in, in, in one aspect, you should, you should consider what are the talents and attributes of this person for him to perform the job, all right? Like, for example, to become a leader. Okay, see, you are the overall director and you will be assigning one leader. Of course, you will be looking at the strong leadership skill that has a heart, that has a, a belief system, and at the same time, that has a charisma to people. You're not going to put somebody who is very aloof, who is not people smart, you know, and, and does not have any leadership skills. Okay? So you have to channel the, 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 the person's talent in order for him to, to place and land, to, and land the job. Directing is a leadership qualities. Okay? This is, this is what is the first requirement of, of conducting this sports event. You should have a directing skills, okay? That includes supervision. And when we do supervision in the course of action, you have to keep motivating your students or keep motivating your staff. Like, for example, you are working to have a football interhouse event, okay? And it, this is happening three months from now, okay? If you are the leader, if you're assigned to head one of the committees, say marketing, you are the marketing head, in order for you to, to keep motivating your staff, you have to keep supervising it, okay? Not, not just only by directing, but by helping them out. Controlling is the process that leaders create to monitor success. Some, at, some of the, some, at some point, we should keep monitoring, like, are we progressing? Are we on the right track? You know, we have this timeline that we need to follow. And controlling skills is one of the best essential factors of a leader in order for us to monitor the success, okay? And when we're trying to control and monitor the success, we are always looking at the performance standard. There should be a norms, okay? There should be a standard where everybody should be able to, to work with, 
okay? And it's measurement. How are we going to measure the standard? Like, for example, uh, if you are in a technical committee and if the assignment given to you is to, to say, for example, to construct a policy of the overall event, all right? So you will be looking into what are the standards that my organization is looking into. And from that, you will be creating some policies. Yeah? We'll go through that. No worries. You just have to remember some of the important terms. So this has been summarized. Organizing means distributing and of resources, staffing, identifying key staff position. You know, you have to get the key words. What are the objectives of planning? So these are the objectives. First objective is goal-oriented. Goal-oriented planning gives sense of direction and vision. Okay. As I mentioned with you, when, whenever you are stating your, your target, your goal and objective, you have to make it smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bounded. Yeah? So you will not going to, again, going back to the example, you're just, you are planning to have a football competition okay? sometimes two months from now, and that competition will only last for at least a week. Okay? You're not going to put to become le to become Ronaldo Cristiano after participating in the competition. How come? Even the best students, best attackers, will not be able to achieve that very broad goal. Yeah, because we have only limited time. In a matter of one week, how this man will be able to become Ronaldo? Okay? So goal-oriented, you have to remember the acronym SMART. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bounded. Okay? Policy. A, one of the objectives that sets boundaries for overall. We have to have this comprehensive policy. If we have policy in place, overall conducts, behavior, technical issues, and human mistake can be all defined. Like for example, remember that we had conducted last year a virtual inter-school event, Olympics, right? Some of the participating school, which I'm not going to mention, they came late. Where every where most of the athletes are have been waiting for such a long time. So if somebody, if one team came late, what does your policy say? Are you going to wait for them? If we will wait for them for how long? What is the acceptable amount of time that we should wait for them? What is the policy says about it? What is the grace period? If in the policy, it says clearly you are only given 15 minutes of grace period time to arrive. And if after 15 minutes, if you will, you will get by default, if you are not at all here, then we need to follow it. We have to respect time. This is a competition. Like for example, in behavior, if one, one athlete loses and if he exhibits some behavioral, bad behaviors like saying bad words, saying, you know, shouting at, the, shouting at the officials and all. What does the policy say? Are you going to tolerate it? Are you going to accept it? So having this policy in place, like a rule, this is a country rule, okay, where we all follow. We should have policy in place. Economy help in cost reduction. It is it, as it increases the coordination and financial control. Economy here explain about the, the, bigger, the bigger competition that we will be creating. So this applies for the national, zones, zonal, or international sporting event. Of course, economy has a direct impact to that uh, because they will be dealing with the real business. You know, they will be dealing with the real athletes, sponsorship. They will be dealing with the real, uh, you know, uh, a commission with, with the athletes. So if the economy is down, like, for example, in Tokyo Olympics, uh, because of the pandemics, uh, my last reading was 80 billion in the sports uh, finance has been, you know, been wasted because they already set up everything, stadium, they already, uh, everything is in place. But then again, pandemic started, so it got delayed and then delayed, delayed, right? So this is what the economy here is talking about. We should understand what the economy and what is happening in our community for us to be able to plan properly. Defining the course of action, is this is the step to be taken to accomplish the stack. Whenever we are planning, we should at least have the minute-to-minute -minute planning or day-by-day -day planning. Like on this day, what are the things to be accomplished? Okay, course of action. 
course of action. Rules and regulation. Uh, it's a technical rules and regulation of the game. Of course, when you are planning a sports, looking at the game's technical perspective, what are your rules? Like, for example, again, going back to the topic of in, uh, inter-house competition, apart from the general rule, we have also defined the technical rule. What is your rule in bottle flipping? Okay, like how many flip do you need, do you, do you need to have? How many flip do you need to have in order for you to get a medal of gold, silver, and bronze? How many minutes are you allowed to do it? Okay, so there is a specific and more technical rules and regulation. The strategy is when you all accomplish it, this is the way you conduct the event. Like what is your strategy of conducting this event? Are you like an authoritative one? Are you like a democratic leader one? Authoritative means you have to, you know, you know, Argentinian. You know, there's a punning joke, Argentinian, Argentinian. What is Argentinian? A person who is always an urgent, 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 okay? Or Russian. What is Russian? Not Russian, Russian, but Russian, it always, they're always in a rush. Okay, are you kind of leader? Are you, are you the kind of leader that is Russian or Argentinian? Or are you just like a, a democratic one? You listen to your staff, you know? You organize your plan and all. So this is this, the strategy. It's up to you. Committee here, we have defined four basic committee. One is technical, finance, marketing, and logistic. Let's go to, ev to each of everyone. When we talk about technical, technical committee, it, in it, 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 eh, it involves requisitions. Okay, requisitions of all the resources that we have. Okay, so if you will be working in a tech technical committee, you have to go, If, you, for example, you will be assigned as the head of the technical committee and you have a direct access to the sports director, okay? Or like in our case, like the, the head of the PE department, you have to ask, sir, I am in charge in the technical committee and these are my requirements. You have to give me the list, okay? I need the ball. If you're playing, if you will be conducting a football, I need the ball, I need the goalpost, I need the field, I need a table, I need a score sheet, everything should be asked, okay? Invitation also, uh, you have to secure this and circular, you know, confirmation from the official. Most of the time, we are hiring officials from outside. So it's you in a technical committee who will be the one who will get that official. Like, for example, you remember we have conducted the Ambassador Cup in the school and we had uh, hired referees from outside. I was the one who confirmed it. So I had uh, an official letter from the school signed by me. And I know I, I did a lot of phone calls. And after that, uh, we agreed that, okay, so this is the amount that you will be getting after you render your service. So the confirmation and all the process should be from your department. You have to also secure the venue, the equipment, the fixture. Yeah. So like, again, in football, you have to have your fixture if it is a league type, if it is a, a knockout type, all right? And the rules and regulation of the football game. So it is the, the, the most of the technical work are in this committee. When we go to finance committee, it provides a financial oversight, okay? Of course, it's all about finance, you know, accounting, you know, uh, Finance, accounting, decision making, because for every decision, there is an equal and opposite uh, payment also whenever we come up with a certain decision. And if this is something to do with the money or purchase, of course, we need to have a very good kind of decision. Sponsorship, okay? Uh, we need to get this. If, if we get this kind of sponsorship, like for example, again, going back to the Ambassador Cup, we had secured sponsorship, okay, of the jerseys. So, it is a benefit for us because in, we, we don't need to provide some bib. They, it sponsored it us, okay, from, from, from the ambassador uh, from the ambassador of India. So it's, it's very good to secure a sponsorship. Purchase and payment of official, you know, uh, you have also have to look at it, you know, the purchase of any equipment. And of course, if you're going to pay your official, your referee, how much are you going to pay for them? Uh, it should be breakdown in the receipt. Also, the rent of the venue if you are just renting and those, you just have to have your loose money with you, okay? If you will be the finance committee because in between, you will be needing a small items to buy, okay? At least you have, you have some, some, some loose money with you, you know? And everything will be uh, accounted and uh, liquidated. 
marketing talks about how to generate publicity and sponsorship. Yeah, it talks about our social media, how are you going to promote your event over print media or television or email or a sponsorship. How are you going to, uh, how are you be able to get sponsorship? Sponsorship, it could be in two, two types, like sponsorship via cash, like we will be getting some cold cash help, or it could be a kind, like bib, whatever that is needed. In, in that specific event. It could be a water bottle, it can be ice cream, it can be juice, you know. So those are the sponsors. And the campaign. Of course, if you are in a marketing and you're trying to publicize your event, you just have to have to campaign. Okay, like in Ambassador Cup, we are promoting football for the girls, school girls. Again, football for the school girls. So that is the campaign. And whenever we do campaign, we have to use the right hashtag, like promote football, school football girls, promote football for uh for for school girls promote uh fifa women's club so this is the campaign that i was talking about logistic the the last one is about transportation you know boarding and lodging of the athletes the refreshment the physical decoration and it talks about the overall program when we have a sports day okay sports day so from the beginning itself where the students will be will be going who are the in charge of that in the program who will be our master of ceremony or the compare uh, who will who will look into the torch who will buy the the torch who is going to hold the flag the house flag these are in the logistic committee right so everything that talks about the the logistic planning from small to big details okay so this is their uh their task so there you have it. So these are the committees that we have. Uh, and this is week one of theory class. Thank you.